We now move into session five, which is dealing with the question of maternity and the proposal that a midwife-led unit will be safe. Jeremy Hunt. Minister, you intend to keep the birthing centre at Lewisham, but to disperse Lewisham pregnant women to other hospitals. Why is that? London has a higher rate of maternity deaths than most other parts of the country. And it is something that any responsible health secretary should try to tackle. The Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and the Royal College of Midwives agree that the way to reduce the number of maternal deaths, in which London does not score well, is to centralise the facilities that deal with the more complex births in fewer sites, where surgeons can get more experience and deliver better clinical outcomes. This is what the proposal is doing. It will lead to fewer maternal deaths in Lewisham and South East London. What financial provision has been put into place to provide uh, for those pregnant women who will be moved out to other hospitals? We've allocated £36 million to expanding the capacity of those other hospitals that will take on more complex and high-risk births as a result of the proposals. And we will work closely with those trusts to ensure that capacity is in place. And what did Sir Bruce Keogh's uh, review say about travel times for those transferred women? Accessing consultant-led maternity services will involve an increase in journey times on average of two to three minutes by private or public transport. Uh, Sir Bruce therefore concluded that there should be no impact on the quality of care due to the small increase in travel time. And is this small increase in travel time something that those uh, patients are likely to object to? The Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists has established that women with high-risk pregnancies would prefer to travel a little bit further if that means they will get better clinical outcomes, uh, which is what this is all about. Thank you. Ruth Cochran. Could you give your full name, please? I'm Ruth Cochran. And what is your role? I'm a consultant obstetrician and gynaecologist at University Hospital Lewisham. How long have you held that post? I've been there over 16 years now. And um, where are you in terms of your seniority in that post? Well, I'm afraid I'm the oldest. I've been there the longest. I'm the most senior consultant. I'm the one that my colleagues come to when they have a problem. What is your particular expertise? I'm a generalist, so I do both obstetrics and gynaecology. Um, I have a major role in terms of labor ward management and the management of high-risk obstetric cases. I see a lot of women who have had previous troubles in pregnancy, particularly stillbirths and recurrent miscarriage, and I do my best to look after them in their future pregnancies. I also have a main uh, major gynaecological interest in doing major gynaecological surgery. How long have you worked for the NHS? 32 years since I qualified. And how would you describe your connection with University Hospital Lewisham? I feel a very deep connection because of the way in which my consultant post came about. I was looking for a consultant job at the time that my predecessor, Miss Mary Anderson, was retiring from Lewisham. And I applied for the post, never thinking for a moment that I would be able to step into her shoes, but I was fortunate enough to be appointed. Mary Anderson was the vice president of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists, and very much a hero to many um, obstetricians and gynaecologists of my generation. And she was extremely proud of being the senior clinician at Lewisham, and I am very, very proud to have followed her. And how do you feel about the service that you provide? 
I think we provide a fair and safe service, and I like to think that we provide choices for women. We have a very interesting mixed borough, which makes the work um, fascinating and challenging. As, as other witnesses have said, we have a high level of deprivation in our borough. We have a very wide range of people who present a very wide range of clinical problems. And I, with my colleagues, I hope, um, are able to offer a good and competent and safe service to those people. You're also a clinical teacher. That's right. I'm the lead for um, undergraduate teaching in obstetrics and gynaecology at Lewisham. Uh, we receive a tranche of medical students from King's Medical School every term, and we, so we have a major role in terms of clinical teaching. The students who come to Lewisham enjoy it thoroughly, not just in our department, but in other departments run by my colleagues. They feel the inclusiveness of our place. They feel that they are involved. They feel part of the team. And that's often a nice surprise for them when they've been bigger, used to a bigger campus. What do you understand the central ethos of the NHS to be? It's the provision of good clinical care that is free at the point of access. And how do you see the internal market as having affected that? I think it's been very worrying because it has set up um, competition amongst colleagues that wasn't really there before. We, we, of course, all like to do well and we like to think that we do the best that we can, but that shouldn't mean that there are problems between departments and between hospitals. I think that the danger of any market-led force in the NHS is that it takes away the original ethos of the service and it takes away the instinctive goodwill which is what makes the NHS so popular and so successful where, where that goodwill is allowed to flourish. To what extent do you take the view that the changes in the NHS have been openly debated? They may have been openly deba debated in our hospital bar and in our common rooms. I don't think they've been openly debated nationally. I feel that many of us hoped that with various governments over the last few years that because members of the higher echelons of that government had personal interest and connection with the NHS that they would understand instinctively that it was worth saving. There's been a lot of talk about the NHS being safe in various senior politicians' hands and I'm afraid I trust none of them. What do the proposals mean for maternity patients? It's going to be very interesting because we currently deliver just over 4,000 women at Lewisham each year. I did a back of the envelope calculation of women who would be considered safe to deliver in a standalone midwifery led unit, which is what Mr. Hunt has proposed for us. And it would be approximately 12% of those 4,000 women. They could only have women who had had a baby successfully, normally before, who weren't overweight, who had no scars on their uterus from a caesarean section or any other surgery, who didn't have any other comorbidity, who didn't have a yen for an epidural, for example, who didn't have any other medical problems, and in whom no emergency could be foreseen. One of the problems with maternity work is that emergencies are inevitable and unpredictable and that's why you need people like me and my colleagues because you cannot always look at somebody and say you're going to have a problem say with bleeding excessively after your baby is born or you're going to have a sudden rise in your blood pressure or your baby's heartbeat is suddenly going to become abnormal unexpectedly quickly in labor I don't have second sight I've just got 30 years experience and I know that even women who are purported to be low risk can often change very quickly. And whilst at the moment, women who deliver in our birth center who need immediate obstetric help can be transferred quickly along a corridor and up to our labor ward, in Mr. Hunt's vision, they will be transferred, as we have heard, slowly in an ambulance to another hospital. I would be terrified if that was me or if that was my daughter. So taking that a stage further in Mr. Hunt's vision, what is going to happen to these mothers and what is going to happen to these babies? Well, I think the word that Mr. Hunt used was dispersed. 
that the idea, as we've heard from other witnesses, is that they will all go to Queen Elizabeth Hospital Woolwich. And we all know that that's not the case. Some might go to Woolwich if they live on the Black East side of the borough, but most would gravitate towards King's or possibly even to St. Thomas's and some of those in Catford down to the Prue. None of these places have sufficient capacity to deal with all the women that they would be expected to deal with if the Lewisham Obstetric Unit closed. And I have real concerns about um, people who have formed um, an attachment, a trust with um, our own department or with our community midwives in Lewisham who might be looked after in the borough antenatally but then will be expected to deliver in another hospital where nobody knows them and where they haven't formed that professional rapport. Certainly many of the women I look after who are terrified because of their past history find great comfort in knowing the people who are, who are going to look after them. And there is a wealth of evidence about the importance of continuity of carer in people who have complex pregnancies with difficult past histories. This proposal would shatter that. And, and how, how is that going to manifest itself in terms of these individual mothers and their babies? What's actually going to happen? What are the dangers? The dangers are that frightened, high-risk women will travel to a hospital they don't know, to be looked after by people who aren't aware of their history in a unit that is already overstretched. My colleague from the London Ambulance Service talked about waits in A&E. There would be similar waits in the maternity services in all of these hospitals. We already run um, very often with a full labor ward and with our neighboring hospitals doing the same. And then when more women come in in labor, some of our local hospitals say, we can't take any more, we'll have to send you to Lewisham. If that's the case now, what's it going to be like when the Lewisham obstetrics closes? The people of Lewisham are not going to stop having babies. They've well, got to be delivered somewhere safely. And the worry is not only will it add the risk for Lewisham women and babies, it will significantly increase the risk for women who are delivering in those other hospitals who are already suffering because the service is overstretched. We will make it even worse. What about the birth rate in Lewisham? How do you see that changing? I think it's likely to increase. You'll have noticed all the building work that's going on up around Lewisham Station. This is going to be affordable housing for young families. Most of those will be fertile and have babies. So I suspect the birth rate here would increase. Um, there's also uh, other developments in the Thames Gateway area which are expected to increase the birth rate in our neighboring hospitals. And so we really should be improving the provision for obstetric patients rather than reducing it. What about the, the integration between hospital services and the community? What do you want to say about that? I think that's something that is currently done well and something that is valued by not just the maternity services, we clearly have a good link with our community midwives and with our local GP colleagues, but this is true across the board in various departments. You heard Liz Aiken earlier talking about the community arrangements with regard to care of the elderly. My paediatric colleagues who will talk later will say the th same thing about community-based paediatric services. It's something Lewisham does well, but it's not something you can generate very quickly. It grows gradually with people who stay in the same job for a long time, forging those links with colleagues from outside of the hospital. And th those links are in real danger with these proposals. Now, you have been a patient yourself at Lewisham. Yes. And in respect of that, what have you found? Well, I was looked after very well. I, I had major surgery about three years ago and ended up in HGU where they looked after me beautifully. And as you can see, I recovered. <laughs> um, but, and, I, and I know that that was because they're extremely good at their job. It wasn't just because I was one of their colleagues and they were being nice to me. So if you, if you fast forward in time to these proposals being put in place, how then would, how would that have affected your circumstances? I would, I'm sure if I went to Guy's for my surgery, they would have looked after me well. Um, it made a big difference to my family, being able to just come down the road to visit. It made a huge difference to me to be looked after by people that I knew and who were familiar with me and who were able to explain to me the severity of my situation and help me through it. The same could be said for everybody in the borough who has had major treatment at the hospital. If you're looked after well, you form a bond and you don't want that bond broken by somebody who quite frankly doesn't understand the details. Now, we've heard about the, um, 
reorganization only supposedly taking place if four tests are satisfied. Mm. Now, those four tests are, one, that there must be sound evidence that it would be clinically sensible, two, that there must have been genuine public consultation, three, there must be agreement from primary care, and four, the changes should enhance rather than reduce choices for patients. Mm. What do you want to say about that? Well, I think this proposal fails all four. Um, we, many of us were involved in the so-called public consultation. Um, the public consultation consisted of Mr. Kershaw standing up in front of a bunch of angry Lewisham residents and them all shouting at him and him having had to be um, hustled out of a back door by security guards. <laughs> if that's consulting the public, then I don't recognize it. But that was the scene at the Calabash Centre shortly before the publication of the proposal. Um, the clinical evidence base, I think, has been roundly demolished by my colleagues from the hospital and myself in terms of the evidence we've been able to provide. But when we tried to explain about clinical evidence to Mr. Kershaw, he didn't really listen. Um, one, one example, really, would be the um, way in which he tried to say to me that it would be okay to have a low-risk obstetric unit at Lewisham, which is what his draft proposal originally suggested. When I said to him, I don't know what low-risk obstetrics is, um, he then, of course, amended his proposal to take away obstetrics altogether and just have a midwifery-led unit with no obstetric support. So that shows you how much he listens to clinical evidence. The choice ele element of it, the final point, um, I think is, is roundly ruined because at the moment, people have the choice to go to their local hospital in Lewisham, and we like to feel that we provide a choice for them about how they are cared for. And if you take Lewisham out of the picture, their choices are diminished rather than increased. And finally, there's been a particular development in the last few days that I know you want to comment about. That's right. Um, in the last week, Lewisham Hospital's maternity services have been the subject of an inspection by an organization called the CNST, which is the Clinical Negligence Scheme for Trusts. This is a national organization that inspects hospitals to make sure that we are practicing in a safe and efficient manner. And there are various levels at which you can pass the CNST inspection. There are um, standards for hospitals in general, and there are more stringent standards for maternity units in particular. We were at the level one of CNST um, until this week, level one being, if you like, the standard version, but we have achieved level two on our recent CNST inspection because they were so impressed with us. And I'd like to just read um, what the inspectors had to say. The assessors were very complimentary on the standard of note keeping and clinical care that they've reviewed. They were impressed with the live records they saw on the postnatal ward and from the birth center and they received so much assurance from those live records of our high standards that when a CNST inspection for level two normally takes two days, they finished ours after just one because they liked so much what they saw. They were particularly complimentary on the detailed documentation of all staff in the care of high-risk women, in particular, in particular postpartum hemorrhage. So it's not just the good people of Lewisham who think that we're all right. And it's not just my consultant colleagues who believe that, but national inspectors who come and look at us and judge us very carefully believe it too. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. No, we don't have it. It's only happened to us here. Uh, yes, I have one question, and that comes again out of this, uh, if you like, government response. Could you look at tab two of the documents? We've seen it before in relation to other witnesses. It is Bruce Keogh's um, provision of material to the Secretary of State. I want to deal with what he says in relation to your topic. If you've got the bottom, I'm afraid it's not page, so it'll be uh, the third, fourth, fourth page of that letter. At the bottom, there's one paragraph dealing with your particular specialism. It, it, have yes. you got the fourth page? I am satisfied. I'm satisfied. Yes. I better read it. So it's a very short paragraph, so everybody knows what the, what the background of the question is. This is what he's telling the Secretary of State. I'm satisfied that there was substantial clinical input and external scrutiny of the maternity options. The expert clinical panel was not willing to endorse the risk 
be it small, for an obstetrician-run unit at Lewisham in the absence of intensive care services. This is because obstetrician-run units attract higher risk mothers and babies. However, in the light of the recent birthplace research study, I support the proposal for a freestanding midwifery-led birthing unit at Lewisham. So, question. He seems to have had a certain amount of criticism of this, but he's overridden that because of a recent birthplace research study. Can you help us? What is that study? The birthplace research study was looking at the safety of various options for place of birth depending on the kind of mothers who were being delivered. And what it found was that, obviously, if you are a high-risk obstetric patient, you need a high-risk obstetric unit. If you are low-risk, um, then you might be okay in a midwifery-led unit, but ideally, you would be best served by a midwifery-led unit that was co-located with an obstetric unit. So, in other words, you'd be looked after by midwives unless your case became complicated, and then you could be moved along the corridor and the obstetricians could help you. Freestanding midwifery-led units are really only endorsed by our Royal College for women who have had babies before who pose no, um, no other risk. And so I, we felt that this paragraph was slightly odd because it was saying we're taking away obstetrics from Lewisham because we're also taking away intensive care. Surely a more logical thing to have done would have been to have kept both. Yes, thank you. And will you ensure that we have copies of the assessment Indeed. that you've just yeah. referred to? Thank you very much. <laughs> Jessica Ormerod. name and your particular area of interest to the Commission, please. Yes, I'm Jessica Ormerod and I'm a lay, the lay chair of the Lewisham Maternity Services Liaison Committee, which is a snappy title. Um, basically, we're a multidisciplinary forum. We work with Lewisham Hospital, the London Borough of Lewisham, and the, our core membership of the committee are mums, and I'm a mum. <laughs> And what's your role, what does your role entail in that organisation? Basically what we do is we look at the service that's being provided at the moment and we look at ways in which it can be improved. And um, how long have you been involved with um, looking at uh, maternity services in Lewisham? Um, I've been involved for three and a half years. And um, what... Uh, do you understand to be the current proposal regarding maternity services at Lewisham Hospital? My understanding is that we pretty much won't have a maternity service locally provided in Lewisham. Um, was your committee involved in the process by which that proposal was made? Well, we were sort of involved. We, I was invited by Lewisham Hospital to attend a consultation with senior clinicians and managers and commissioners. Sorry, who, who invited you? Sorry, Lewisham Hospital invited me to attend with them a workshop, maternity workshop with the TSA. And do you have a good working relationship with Lewisham Hospital? I've got an excellent working relationship with Lewisham Hospital, yes. And how do you find their responsiveness to your committee's concerns? They are really excellent. We have we've made huge changes to Lewisham Hospital since my first daughter was born eight years ago when Lewisham Paternity Services didn't have quite the same reputation they have now. They, Lewisham Hospital and the PCT and now that's part of look at the council have responded to women brilliantly they've provided they've opened up the midwife led unit we've got excellent care within the community and the MSLC is a vital part of everything that happens with maternity services in Lewisham and and how supported do you feel as a mother and as a member of the committee by Lewisham hospital I'm hugely supported 
Now, you've said that um, Lewisham Hospital invited you to attend a meeting with the TSA team. Yes, this is during the consulta so-called consultation period. Um, I, it was a maternity workshop. It was hosted by the TSA, and it, um, the TSA had invited senior clinicians and managers and commissioners from Lewisham, from St Thomas's and Kaiser St Thomas's, from King's, from Bromley, and from uh, Down Valley, and from Woolwich. And um, how did the TSA team react to your attendance at that meeting? They were rude, is, doesn't really quite cut it. They were, I arrived having, it, the meeting had been planned for sort of two or three weeks, and uh, somebody asked me what I was doing there. So I explained to them what I was doing there. Was that a member of the team? I was a member of the TSA team. And uh, at which point, they all went into disarray and were horrified that I could be at this meeting. And they asked me to leave. And I said, absolutely not. I represent all maternity users in Lewisham. I can't understand why you wouldn't want me here. And, and you were invited. <laughs> and I was invited. And I've got a babysitter, so I'm staying. <laughs> So I sort of walked past them and went into the meeting and sat down and I thought they'll have to pick me up if get rid of me. So what reasons were you given why it wasn't appropriate for well, you to stay? Well, somebody said, suggested that I might not be able to follow the clinical discussion and I said I didn't really think that was any of her business and it was my decision if I could follow it or not. Um, so at that point I was... I wasn't actually, at that point, I was sort of ignored. So then my colleagues at Lewisham Hospital were told that if I didn't leave, I could stay, but that's because they obviously would have had to cart me out. Um, and so they said I wasn't allowed to speak. Were you provided with any documentation in advance of the meeting? Uh, nobody was provided with any documentation before the meeting. There was no agenda, there, were no, there was nothing. This was, and this was you know, really senior members of staff in, or across many trusts. Was there any meaningful consultation at that meeting? Absolutely not. Describe how the meeting went. The meeting was quite horrifying. Um, obviously, I had been told not to speak. I didn't know if that was true of anybody else at the meeting. Um, there... <laughs> it was... It was extraordinary. Doctors, midwives, commissioners, managers, all tried to get their concerns across to the TSA team, who were absolutely not interested and said that they didn't really, they weren't interested in any of the models that anybody had brought along with them for patient flows or, you know, any of, anything at all really, because what they were attempting to do was start afresh and have a completely new model of care. And that was it. And they said, if you have a problem with this, you can leave. So there was no clinical or patient input into that model? Not as far as I could see. Certainly not at that meeting. Certainly not at that meeting. Was there any discussion of the issues arising from that model? There was no discussion at all. There was no discussion allowed. It was, we were broken into groups, and at the group that I was at, absolutely everyone, we were broken into groups of Lewisham, Kings, guys, Darren Valley, it crossed the trusts. And everybody tried to say, we haven't been consulted with yet, we would like to use this opportunity to consult with you. And they were told that that wasn't the, on the agenda for that meeting and that if they weren't interested in providing their expertise in this sort of, there was a young woman desperately scrabble, scr um, writing in boxes about, you know, people's ideas. <laughs> it was sort of totally, you know, come on, think now, what can you add? It was, there was you no, describe it as hasty? It was hasty and it was absurd. It was absurd. Um, on reflection, what considerations do you feel the TSA process failed to take into account as a, as a result of this? Uh, meeting or failed consultation exercise? 
I think they failed to take into account women's concerns. I, I mean, I, I then, after this meeting, attempted to have a consultation with the TSA again because I felt that I hadn't been, obviously hadn't been able to represent my views. Did you write them a letter? I wrote Matthew Kershaw a letter, letter straight after the meeting saying what I thought about his consultation process and demanding to have a meeting with one of his team. And did you write to the Secretary of State? I've written to the Secretary of State many times. The Commission has that letter at 172. So you've said that um, there was a failure to take on board women's concerns. Well, women's concerns, but also cl clinicians, managers, commissioners, that across the board. What about um, the views of those with um, particular needs? Um, what about diversity in the community? D yes, this is something that we, in our committee, we, we feel very strongly about. And we have um, a representative from the Lewisham Migrant and Asylum Seeker Network um, who comes to our meetings. Um, we, and we consult with those, those um, maternity users quite frequently. Um, the, Just before you yeah. go on to talking about that, could you tell the Commission a little, about, a little bit about the kinds of groups and the kinds of needs there are in the Lewisham community? Well, as has been said before, Lewisham is a sort of complex and deprived borough. We've got maternity users who have very complex needs, sort of socially and economically, and also with health, high risk health needs. And it's the job of our committee to make sure that we represent those women and make sure that they have fair access to maternity services. So you're going to go on and, and tell us those uh, matters that you felt the process had failed to take into account? When we finally got our meeting with Je Dr Jane Fryer, who um, kindly agreed to come to my house the evening that the consultation was closing, I, they'd agreed that I could have a one-to-one -one meeting, but I decided that it would be only fair to let other maternity users come to the meeting with me. Um, Jane Fryer was quite upset about this, um, but she didn't really have a choice, so that's fine. And um, we... we Wait, what, was, what was the timing of that meeting? The timing was 8 o'clock in the evening on the, on the night that the consultation closed. Oh. So you didn't have a chance to feed in... That was our first opportunity <laughs> to, to actually have a proper conversation with um, Jane Fryer. Um, we, there were eight of us in total, and we made very clear that we felt that the models that had been used in the TSA were sort of actually nonsense. We didn't know where they could have found them. And presumably you'd had an opportunity to I'd consider them by then? I considered them because I'd been so involved with Lewisham Hospital and they'd shared, and public health in Lewisham, they'd shared a lot of the data and the models with me. So I could see that the TSA's models were completely ridiculous. And also because I live in the borough, I know how long it takes me to get to Lewisham Hospital. I, my second child was actually born at St Thomas's, and I know that I nearly had her in the back of our car. So it doesn't take a genius to work out that what the TSA was suggesting was just rubbish. So with the meeting with Jane Fryer, we, we actually we talked about our concerns about women not being able to access maternity care at all um, because of they wouldn't be able to afford to actually receive the care in, in, in Woolwich or elsewhere, that women would be confused and um, also that when you're in labour, um, I don't know how many people know this, but actually taxis won't take you to hospital. So you have to walk or you have to get a bus or you have to kind of cross your fingers um, that the ambulance is actually going to arrive. So that's highly dangerous and an outrage. And what were, your, what, what were you, the, the ultimate fears and concerns of you and your group? Well, obviously, the, as Ruth just said, um, childbirth is really unpredictable. And for women, many women, they could, th things can happen late on and post-delivery that are very life-threatening, such as postpartum hemorrhage. And what we were trying to get across to Jane Fryer was that postpartum hemorrhage is a relatively frequent occurrence. And if a woman who's had a low-risk delivery starts to bleed, it, it requires somebody to notice it, first of all. If you're in a very highly pressured, busy ward, it's not, you're not necessarily going to notice it until quite late. And then you have to 
organise the transfer to a hospital that can deal with you. So this woman could be bleeding to death in the back of an ambulance. And is that really something that they could countenance, really? I mean, it's sort of... Jane Foyer said to us that there were things you could do for postpartum hemorrhage, such as putting in a drip, which I'd, I'd never heard of before. And um, she tried to reassure us that that wouldn't happen, but... You aren't convinced, no. And what about the um, issue of maternal choice? Well, obviously, if you lose your local hospital, your choice is significantly reduced. Um, most women want to give birth safely at their local hospital. They don't want to be travelling miles and hours out of their area. And at the moment, we have a safe hospital where we can have our babies, and we have a choice of different services that we can use. There's home birth, there's, which is very well supported at Lewisham. There's the midwife-led unit. There's the obstetric unit. They've also just opened two home-from-home -home rooms within the acute labour ward. Lewisham Hospital are very good at responding to women's choice, and the TSA are closing those doors to women. And is that a, a choice which is supported throughout the prenatal period, a part of a process? I don't understand. I, I'm sorry. I, that, um, that the act of birth doesn't doesn't simply take place on the day of the birth. There's a whole process which leads into that support. Choices are of made course. during that process. Yes, and, and relationships can change with, as well. With, with midwives. Absolutely. And one, at the moment, one has a midwife team that you get to know in your community and who are often the midwives who deliver you when you have your baby. How important are those relationships? They are hugely important. When you're giving birth, trust is essential. You're, you're in a vulnerable, very vulnerable position, often, particularly for a lot of Lewisham residents. And you have to have trust in your midwife because they're, and doctors, obstetricians, because they are going to save your life if something goes wrong. I don't have any further questions, but the Commission may have some. Uh, yes, Jessica, thank you. Um, I'm looking at uh, a document which indicates you wrote to Mr. Kershaw. I did. Uh, pointing out that there's a very diverse community here in this area with very different needs and you pointed out the elements of that community, is that right? Yes. Uh, this was totally rejected as being necessary for consultation, it seems from what you've said. Yes, they absolutely, they, um, the TSA team contacted the local NCT branch who, are, um, who contacted me to ask me to help the TSA um, set up two focus groups for women um, and uh, it was an extraordinary um, process. They sort of basically promoted these groups to the NCT which are hardly known for their sort of ethnic diversity or social diversity and um, they didn't provide, they were, well they were planning not to provide a creche even, I, I asked them to do that. They didn't promote it within the community, in libraries, in the hospital, it was two meetings. They were, give, women were given about three, maybe four days' notice to take part, and there was, no, there was no attempt to make them, other than by asking me if I could particularly ask black women to attend, which I found to be really offensive. Now, one other thing, and that is you've uh, written, as you said, to... Jeremy Hunt, a, a, a quite a long and detailed letter with various headings of the deficiencies um, and, and one of them being maternity matters have been completely disregarded. Now, I'm not going to read the letter out, we have it, but did you get a reply? Oh, I got a standard reply saying thank you for my letter. But I actually wrote to him four times during four. this period too because I had so much to say. <laughs> Um, and you've got and we, also, we also submitted our own response, um, the MSLC submitted our own response to the TSA as well, which um, the first one wasn't acknowledged at all, although it was cited in the Royal College of Midwives um, response, which was, I was very pleased about. But um, the, I wrote up the minutes with the Jane Fryer meeting, and they were submitted to the TSA. She submitted them, actually, on our behalf. Um, right, it's a point of information, really. We, uh, 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 maybe others do. I don't seem to have um, any of the letters back from Mr. Hunt or anyone on his behalf. So I'd quite like to eventually to get copies of that. Is that? Do you have them? I think so. Don't worry if you haven't. 
Um, and, but more particularly, planned. do you have what you submitted? Your, like Absolutely. a copy of that, please. All of it. Oh, how much is it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, we, we, we are providing wheelbarrows, so it's fine. That's great. Can I just say, I'm reducing it to this. Um, <laughs> most mothers want a safe birth. In your view, a midwifery-led unit, as proposed by Jeremy Hunt, whatever the skills of midwives, will strike most mothers as potentially risky. And therefore, in effect, what he's proposing will mean the end of maternity services in Lewisham. I do, and I think it's also important to say that women will not choose to give birth in a standalone midwife-led unit, they recognise that it's not safe in their view and so it will not be used and women are saying that again and again and again. That's not just in Lewisham, that's yep. nationally. Toyen Adiinka. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Would you kindly tell the Commission your name, please? My name is Toyen Adiinka. And your connection to Lewisham Hospital and the reason why you are giving evidence to this Commission of Inquiry. I'm a Lewisham resident and a mother of one son, who I believe you all heard earlier, and I'm here to speak on behalf of women, mothers and vulnerable people of this borough. Uh, if I might, I want to, um, you to describe your experience of having uh, had a baby within Lewisham, your own personal experience. So could you please... First of all, I'll just set the, the background. Your son mm. was born at Lucian Hospital in 2011. Is that That's correct? right. Uh, is it also correct uh, that you were a fir you are, were a first time mum? Yes. Um, but there were some health issues. That's correct. So there was therefore increased risk of blood pressure. That's right. Uh, and other issues arose as your pregnancy developed. Is that correct? Um, I already had blood pressure prior to being pregnant, but I was not on any medication or anything like that, but because of my pregnancy, my blood pressure rose, which then led to it being a high-risk pre pregnancy. And at 35 weeks, there were some difficulties that arose within that pregnancy. That's correct. That Can you explain to uh, the Commission what those difficulties were? Yes. my. Due to the blood pressure, um, I was monitored on a weekly basis and then a two-weekly basis, uh, which also meant that I had increased scans. And at the 35-week scan, my son's abdomen had shown no growth. And it was a concern that if there had been no, he would have had to have been, they would have had to, you know, have perform a C-section for him to... Uh, I wouldn't have been able to carry on the pregnancy. So what happened to you? Thankfully, uh, I had a scan a week later and there was um, growth, but it still meant that because of the blood pressure, my, I had to be induced um, at 37 weeks. Who, who made that decision? Who, um, who I actually it? came under Ruth's um, care and um, it had been decided that because of the blood pressure he needed to get out because the placenta then began, began, uh, begins to shut down. So you were admitted? That's correct. And you stayed in hospital for a period of eight days? That's is that right. right, yes. Uh, and what happened then? You were in hospital for eight days. What, what, what type of delivery did you have? We tried to, uh, for a natural delivery, but my body wasn't responding. Um, I had scans, uh, my baby was monitored to make sure his heartbeat was okay. There were a couple of scares where his um, heartbeat levels had dropped, but thankfully they picked up again, but a decision was made that on the 18th that 
we could not keep him in any longer, that he actually needed, uh, sorry, this is a rating for vapor, that he needed to come out. So, um, because they had tried everything in terms of the inducement, body was not working, responding to it, so they decided that yeah, I was going to have to have a C-section. And that, uh, all of that could not have been predicted in advance? Did no, you accept that? absolutely not. Um, whilst you were in hospital, did you have, were you able to be visited by members of your family and friends? Thankfully I was, because of being local, family being local. Uh, it was 15 minutes by bus for my sister in particular to be able to come and bring me breakfast. But anything I needed, she was able to do that. Um, yeah. And following the birth, were there any difficulties that you had that required you to stay in hospital? Uh, because of the blood pressure and because of uh, my son's weight, we did have to be monitored through the night, um, constant um, blood sugar levels being tested and because of my blood pressure being quite high, uh, that needed to be monitored and just to make sure that me and my son were doing well. So following your birth, the birth, mm -hmm. how long did you remain in hospital? Uh, another three days. So you had a total of 11 days? In hospital, but yes, all right, or thereabouts. Yeah, that around that. Now, um, I'd like to talk to you about, or ask you to inform the commission uh, about how far or close is the hospital to where you live? How long does it take you in travel time to get to Lewisham? Right now, it would take 20 minutes walking, 10, 15 minutes by uh, 15 minutes by bus, and. Um, do you know what the cost would be of taking um, a minicab, say, five? Yes, to? Um, it would cost five pound. Now, you know what the proposals are, the trust yes. special administrator. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, do you believe that you would be a mother that could use uh, uh, the proposed midwifery-led unit? I know I wouldn't be able to. So where would you go? I would have no choice but to use Kings. That's what I would have to do if they decide to go through with this, which isn't what I would want. I couldn't even consider using uh, QE Hospital because that's just way too far. Tell, tell us why, why you say that. Why it is, by, at the moment, it could take one bus to get to Lewisham Hospital, like I said, 10, 15 minute journey. To get to QE would take well over an hour, and that's two, bus, two to three buses or two buses and a train. Who wants to do that when they're pregnant? Nobody. I don't imagine anyone would want, women would want to do that. And what would you say the impact would have, be have on, sorry, uh, the use of a midwifery led unit would have on young mothers in terms of travel times, cost? and desirability of going elsewhere? I think it would have a, a neg really negative impact because at the moment, Lewisham Hospital, obviously, where it is, is very local. If someone's referred there, it's not that hard to get to, but as possibly a younger mother, you may not feel like you have the energy or you, you really want to have to travel that far. You won't possibly understand the importance of these appointments as it is, and the thought of having to face an hour plus journey, um, I mean the cost of it is ridiculous. A one way journey by cab from, for example, where, near where I live would be £13. Now if you're someone who is on a low income, you're somebody who, you know, you come from a family where there isn't much coming in, you know, that obviously two ways is £26. Not everybody can afford that, so it's not going to have a good effect. And. Um were you in the future to have to become pregnant again, mm. would you use the proposed maternity-led unit yourself? No. Why would you not use it? I just wouldn't be allowed to. I mean, this Ruth has just explained. I had a C-section. I'm overweight. I've had a my pregnancy wasn't the easiest pregnancy. They wouldn't take me. So no. What would you do then? I would have to. I mean, it's a horrible. Sort of question when you think about it because it's going to you when you plan to have a family you don't sit there thinking oh where's my nearest hospital going to be who who thinks about that but this is something you will actually start to think about in the future which is wrong when you've got a perfectly good fantastic midwifery you know 
it's just it's wrong. It's just wrong. I'm extremely grateful to you. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. But, um, <laughs>